Okay, today I'm going to go over pinning insects. Um, we're going to start off with large insects and then we'll do small insects as well. Um, the first piece of equipment that you need to make sure you have are your insect pins. You can pick these up at the bookstore. Uh, insect pins come in uh, several sizes ranging from triple zero all the way up to seven. Triple zero through six are all the same length. They just vary in uh, diameter and you want to use the larger insect pins for real hard bodied insects. Most of the time I would just recommend using size 2 for everything uh, that you're going to run into. If it's, uh, if it's going to be pinned with an insect, a size 2 pin will be large enough to pin it for everything that you're going to collect around here. If a size 2 pin is too large to pin the insect, chances are you should probably go, should go ahead and point that anyway. Using the size 0 or triple zero insect pins, they're so thin that they tend to hook or bend on you pretty easily. So I'd recommend just sticking with size 2 to begin with. First example I'm going to show you is with a large insect, a beetle. Um, and the way that you're going to do this is, first off, just get over your inhibition. Uh, you're going to have to touch these guys and handle them. So you want to form like a cradle with two of your fingers in one hand to cradle underneath the insect. And then take your insect pin and press it, since it's a beetle, we're going to be pinning it through the right elytra, about a third of the way down on the elytra, and a third of the way from the, from the median line. And you're going to want to push the insect pin through that surface of the elytra. And then you're going to want to make sure that the pin is going directly perpendicular into the insect. You don't want the pin to go at an angle towards the head or towards the tail of the insect. So make sure the pin is going through perpendicular to the insect. And then remember you're cradling underneath the insect as the pin just pierces through. Once the pin has gone through, you can look at it and make sure that it's perpendicular. Rotate the insect, make sure that it's not going through at an angle to the insect. And in this case, it's not. That means I'm ready to position the insect at the correct height on the pin. To do that, I'm going to use a pinning block. This is going to position the bottom of the insect 25 millimeters up onto the pin. Place the pinning block on a hard surface and just press the pin into this tallest hole until it hits the table underneath it. This is going to position the insect. On a very thick insect, this may position the insect so far up that you don't have room to hold it by the top of the pin. If that's the case, just come back to your pinning block and use this very uh, thinnest step in reverse and put the head of the insect pin into that hole. And that will ensure that you have enough room to grab the insect and hold it by the head of the pin. Once you have your insect pinned and at the correct height, you want to use a piece of styrofoam like this to position the insect. You're going to press the insect all the way until the abdomen actually comes up in contact with the styrofoam. The reason that you do this is that as the insect dries, the legs or abdomen could droop down, and this is going to be a problem when you apply the next label, the, the first label, the locality label, to the insect. So, grab several insect pins now and look at your insect. You can see with this one that several of the legs are pointing out on one side. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tuck those legs all in towards the center of the insect. This is going to ensure that they don't get broken off when the insect is being handled. This is particularly important in an insect collection that's not for display, that's actually for research. People don't need to be able to see all the legs spread out nice and neat. What they need is to have the legs tucked in where they're safe and aren't going to be hurt or damaged. And you can use as many pins as you need to around the insect to make sure that all the legs are tucked in appropriately. And once you've done that, you can see now all the legs are tucked in. You're going to want to leave it like this for two to three days. Give it a chance to dry out before you take these pins out and then apply your label. In some cases, though, an insect is going to be too small and you aren't going to be able to push the pin through it. If you try to, it's going to just crack the insect apart. Uh, it's going to push the legs off, things like that. In those cases, you're going to have to point the insect. To do that, you're going to take a point punch like this and make little triangles out of a thick uh, cardstock paper. So just take your point punch and punch your triangles. 
you'll then use a point block like this. This is actually just a slice of a telephone book that's been wrapped around itself. So you have this thin paper that can support the uh, points and allow you to push the pen through. So take your points, sprinkle them on top, and then take your insect pens and just press the pen through the base of the triangle. And you'll end up with triangles that all have points on them at the same height. You'll take this point and you can use your fingernails to bend an L shape at the tip of the point. This is going to give you a surface that you can uh, put the glue on and that you can then touch the insect to glue the insect to the point. So I've just put a drop of Elmer's glue on my paper here and I'm just going to barely touch the tip of this point to that glue and then I'm going to come to the insect and just touch that now, that point that now has a bit of glue on the tip, touch that to the right side of the specimen and then adjust it to make sure that it's, once again, it's level with the point and that it's perpendicular to the point. So if this is the insect, the point should come perpendicular to the side of the insect. We're going to always be pinning on the, we're always going to be pointing on the right side of the insect. So if you're looking at the dorsal surface, the back side of the insect, the point should come in to the right side and be uh, glued to the side of the insect. You don't want the point to go underneath the insect. This is going to block important anatomical structures that you're going to need to identify the insect later. So, um, also if you let your glue dry for just a moment or two first, sometimes that can be helpful so it's a little bit thicker when you start pinning.